now we present The Man Called X, tonight starring Joseph Cotton. The Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. Joseph Cotton in The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison at any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. <laughs> The city of Algiers, lying as it does on the borderline between Africa and Europe, is a city of continual tension between the old and the new, a place where the ordinary disagreements among men may flare suddenly into violence and sweep overnight from the desert to the sea. The sharp contrast between modern Europe and age-old Africa becomes most evident perhaps at the Algiers airport where the gleaming stratoliners from France are loaded by Arabs dressed in loincloths and sandals, cut to the same pattern as those once worn in ancient cotton. At the moment, one such plane, with its cargo and passengers aboard, moves out onto the flight strip and is quickly airborne and bound for Paris. Mile after mile, it wings westward over the rich coastal belt, climbing steadily. And finally, it turns into a long, sweeping bank and heads out over the blue Mediterranean. Then, suddenly... Where the plane was flying, there is nothing. Scattered pieces of blasted wreckage drop from the sky and fall into the sea. The streets of Algiers seethe with anger and hatred, and messages pour out by wire and radio to Paris, London, and New York. On a floor of offices high above Manhattan streets, the messages come flooding into the teletype room of the bureau, where trained specialists take them line by line, decode and analyze them, and send them on their way. And eventually, at the end of a long hall on the same floor, the report from Algiers arrives at the office of the chief. I'm sorry to have to pull you off that Bramby case, Joe, but with Ken Thurst on the sick list, well, you've worked closer with him than anyone else. Well, all I know about it is what I got from the newspapers on the way up here, chief, and that wasn't much. Uh, we don't have much more ourselves, Joe. But Sir Hartley Manning was on board that plane. And that's reason enough to drop everything else. I know, no, UN advisor on North African affairs. The only man who's ever shown a chance of bringing about some permanent agreement between the Arabs and the French. Yeah. He was supposed to give his decision on the Arab farm loan in Paris today. That's why the lid's ready to blow off over there. You see, nobody knows for sure what his decision was going to be. And each side's blaming the other for his murder. I suppose there's no doubt that it was murder. No, no. The plane was literally blown to bits. It couldn't have been an accident. Joe, somebody put a time bomb aboard. Well, one thing's certain, Chief. It's got to be solved fast or there's no point in solving it at all. I know Algiers pretty well. One spark can start a blaze. There's a plane standing by. It's ready to leave whenever you are. I guess I'd better start. Uh, oh, Joe, there's uh, one other thing. I don't know exactly how to say it. And I'd rather that Ken Thurston wasn't told just... Hmm? And Joe, I just got the full passenger list a little while ago, the victims of that explosion, and, well... For what? 
One of the names was Pagon Zelschmidt. Pagon Z- Yeah, no. I've always been pretty rough on Zelschmidt, but... Uh, well, I'm sorry. Pagon. Well, all of us here in the Bureau have been pretty rough on him, and... You come right down to it underneath it all... No. Well, Chief, I'll, I'll call you from Algiers. <laughs> If you will be so kind as to sign the register here, uh, Monsieur Kendall. Uh, thanks. I do hope that you will find our services adequate. We are somewhat disorganized, you understand, because of the tragedy. You mean Sir Hartley Manning's Oui, death. Monsieur. Oui. He was staying here in the hotel. I watched him walk out through this very lobby on his way to the airfield. Too bad. Only Aben Ahmed was with him and a boy who was carrying the large box which Monsieur Manning was taking with him on the plane. Large box? Oui, monsieur. I am told it contained wine from the Arab vineyards, a bon voyage gift from Aben Hamid. I see. Uh, tell me, who is this uh, Aben Hamid? I believe he is a leader of the Arab Union. He, he maintains an office somewhere in the Casbah. Casbah, huh? I well, beg I... your pardon. Are there any messages for me? Uh, one moment, monsieur. No, monsieur. There is nothing. Thank you. Uh, monsieur Garmets here was the only lucky passenger on that plane, Lucky. You know. Ah, yes, I was already aboard when a business call over the loudspeakers caused me to leave the plane less than five minutes before the takeoff. Well, you were lucky. Uh, very much so. I don't believe I've had the oh, pleasure... Oh, uh, of... Joe Kendall, I'm a new arrival, Mr. Grommets. Oh, well, in that case, welcome to Algiers, Mr. Kendall. Thank you. Now, if you will excuse me, gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, very wealthy man, Monsieur Grommets, most influential. Uh, well, now, if you'll excuse me... Uh... Hey, ju- just a moment there. What do you mean, just a... Oh, <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Candle. Hey, God. I, I thought you were dead. Me? Uh, I never felt better in my life. Your name was on the passenger list of that plane that exploded. Oh, just an ugly rumor. Anybody that says I'm dead is nuts. Crazy, even. Well, thank you. I was just... supposed to be on the plane, you understand? Only, only I run into an old friend of mine at the airport, and he tipped me off. What do you mean, tipped you off? Well, he said that he had a hunch I... I had no auto to take that plane, so I didn't. <laughs> yes, he was psychic. Yeah, that's one explanation. Do you know where he is now? Not exactly. I know a couple of joints he hangs out in, though. Well, find him, Pagan, and try to find out why he had that hunch. But I haven't got time. I'm working. Working. It'd be easier to believe you were dead. But I am... I mean, working. I, I, I'm here buying Persian rugs for my uncle Ahmed. In Algiers? All right, they're Algerians, <laughs> so we get them cheaper. Who knows the difference? Well, it's too bad you're tied up, Pagan. I figured it might be worth, well, say, around a hundred bucks to find out. <clears throat> I'll have the dope in an hour. Where are you going to be? Back here, probably. Right now, I'm going up to the Caspar. Ah, going to see the dancing girls, eh? No. I'm going to look for a killer. Huh? More tea, Mr. Kendall. No thanks, I've been having a death. Oh, one, Splinter. <laughs> Mr. Kendall, this exchange of pleasantries has been most agreeable. But this old one has the feeling that you have come to Aben Hamid with more in mind than a mere social visit. And this old one has probably guessed what I have in mind. One assumes that a man from the Bureau... Mm-hmm would be investigating the tragedy of Sir Hartley Manning's death. And if I were, would you know anything about it? Only that his death was also tragedy for my people. It is possible that the loan to the farmers may not be granted now. Well, according to the rumors around this city, Manning had decided not to recommend the loan. The rumors are false. Hmm. Yes. Sir Hartley stated on the way to the airport that he had decided to urge granting of the loan with all the influence at his command. I see. Aben, uh, 
I'm told that you gave Manning an unusually heavy case of wine to take with him on the plane. That is true, but... Uh, I have no idea how the explosive was put aboard the plane, Mr. Kendall. But I assure you that the case of wine contained only wine. There would be no reason... Leaving now, Father, to take the money to Billy and I... Oh, I am sorry. I thought you were alone. It is well, Mara. This is Mr. Kendall, my daughter, Mara. How are you doing? Mr. Kendall is investigating Sir Hartley's death. You mean his assassination? I hope you find the murderer, Mr. Kendall. And I hope that when you do, the crowd in the street tears him to pieces. Mm. You must forgive her violence. Mara is a modern young woman in most ways, but her blood still remembers the glint of knives in the moonlight. Yes. And I know where I would like to bury that knife. Mara, stop it. Uh, I'm sorry, Father. Mr. Kendall. I understand. But, but you see, hundreds of farms will go into bankruptcy. And then revolt, perhaps. And military rule, perhaps. It's a grim picture, all right. Mass bankruptcy alone is bad enough, except for the person who profits by it. Grummet. Grummet? He holds nearly all the mortgages on Arab lands, Mr. Kendall. I see. Oh, I will get it. Yes? Oh, just a moment. It is for you, Mr. Kendall. No, thanks, sir. Pardon me, Yes. Hello? I've been hunting all over for you, Mr. Kendall. The hotel manager finally said to try this number. Are you at the hotel now, Pagan? No, I'm down at the harbor. But I'm going there. What are you doing so long up there in Kasbah? Drinking tea. Tea? Uh, did you locate your friend? Oh, sure. He says he's got the tip about that plane... From his boss. His boss? Uh-huh. Who does he work for? Oh, some Arab character by the name of Aben Hamid. Good evening, Mr. Kendra. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Garnett. I phoned your room a while ago, but you weren't in. I was wondering if you'd care to have dinner with me. Why? Well, thanks. Uh, glad to. Uh, good. See, in about half an Going hour. Up, oh, fine. I'll meet you in the lobby. Three, please. Oui, monsieur. Uh, you are Monsieur Kendall, no? Right. I have just taken a friend of yours up, Monsieur Kendall. Oh? I think he's very sick or something. Huh? Something is bad wrong with him. Floor, please. Thanks. Devil could... What? Uh, Pagan. Pagan, what, what was wrong? Stop, Mr. Kim. In the back. Here, have a look. Oh. oh forgive me, Mr. Kendall, for getting blood all over your floor. Yeah, I... Easy, easy now. Uh, I've got a doctor up here right away. Uh, Just lie back there. Pagan. Pagan. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. The RCA Victor factory service contract is practical and reliable. As the owner of an RCA Victor television set, you can enjoy the protection of an RCA Victor factory service contract. You can depend on it to keep your RCA Victor television receiver in perfect condition at all times, in all ways. And you always are sure to receive prompt, courteous, and expert service by RCA's own factory trained technicians. Think of it. Hours and hours of uninterrupted pleasure. No unnecessary expense for repairs or parts. And service is available with or without a contract only to RCA Victor television owners. So make yours an RCA Victor television set. And if you're planning on buying a new one, be sure to hear and see the incomparable Regency, a magnificent television console. It's America's favorite television, featuring a big 17-inch screen in a matchless setting. And inquire about RCA Victor's factory service contract when you buy the Regency. Now to continue.
continue with The Man Called X, tonight starring Joseph Cotton with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. A plane explodes in midair over the Mediterranean, and Sir Hartley Manning, whose decision would have determined the fate of the Arab farm loan for North Africa, dies in the explosion, leaving his decision unknown. Algiers is seething with growing tension and the threat of violence. And now Joe Kendall returns to his hotel room to find Pagan knifed in the back and lying in a pool of blood. Now let me clip the ends of this bandage. There. I guess that's about the best I can do, Mr. Kendall. Still unconscious, Doctor? Well, he seems to be stirring a bit now. Wouldn't it be a good idea to move him to a hospital? No. There's really no point in it. I'll be in room 110 if you need me, Mr. Kendall. Thank you, Doctor. Mr. Kendall. Hiya, Pagan. I don't really mind dying. You understand? Huh? But I want you to know that I'm sorry, Mr. Kendall, for all the bad things I've done. <laughs> what things? Oh, I want you to forgive me. Ask Mr. Thurston to forgive me, too. You can... You forget that hundred dollars you owe. Now that is repentance. When you come right down to it, underneath it all, I'm your friend. Yeah, I know that. Who was it, Pagan? Who stabbed you? I don't know. It was dark. I, I know one thing, though. It was a girl. A girl? I could smell the perfume she was wearing. It was subtle. But exciting, like, like voodoo or sabu or... A connoisseur to the last. Hmm? Please, your dear old friend is dying. Oh, snap out of it, Pagan, you're all right. Don't lie to me. I can take it, yeah. The doctor said there wasn't even any point in taking it to the hospital. Because there's no need to. That knife glanced along one of your ribs. You've got a bad surface cut, that's all. You're not going to die. I'm not? No. Well, in that case, where's my hundred bucks? The Arabs have always been their own worst enemies, Mr. Kendall, and this Manning affair has proved to be no exception. How do you mean, Mr. Gromit? Well, I mean they antagonized Manning in every way possible, in, in spite of the efforts of some of us to get a favorable decision for the loan. And then when it became known that Manning would oppose the loan, <laughs> they killed him. You think, then, that the Arabs were responsible for the plane explosion? I believe it is the only explanation that fits the fact. Provided, of course, that the main fact you're referring to is correct, that Manning had decided to refuse the loan. As far as I know, that's only a rumor. I can confirm it, Mr. Kendall. Yes. I, I talked with Manning here at the hotel only two hours before he went to the airfield. He told me he was turning down the loan. I see. I tried to reason with him, but it was no use. His mind was made up. Mr. Gromitz, it would seem to me that... Uh, your own interests might be better advanced if the loan were refused. Because of mass bankruptcy, you mean? On, on the contrary, I have lost money on every foreclosure I have been forced to make. And then you claim to be as disappointed as the Arabs over Manning's decision. Yes, but not disappointed enough to murder him. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Well, incidentally, the airline officials tell me that you had nearly 200 pounds of baggage on the plane that blew up. Why, yes, I had to leave the plane so hurriedly that there was no time to remove it. They also tell me you've made no claim for reimbursement. Well, I've been so shaken by that narrow escape that I... Kendall, I completely forgot about it. Little shack right ahead, Mr. Kendall. 
on this side of the fishing wharf. And next to the cannery, Pagan, your friend, seems to go in for atmosphere. Oh, Billy is not particular. Billy? Yeah, that's his name. Why? Because it's also the name of a man Abin Hamid's daughter mentioned. She was going to see him and give him some money. Oh, that figures. Billy said he worked for Abin Hamid. Yeah, I know. Come on, let's go. The part I don't get, Mr. Kendall... Is how come some character wants to kill me? I I didn't do nothing. No, but you could do something. Why? You could testify that you were warned ahead of time that the plane was in danger. Yeah, but... Huh? And the man who warned you probably knows who caused the explosion. Oh, uh, maybe we just had a hunch. Oh, maybe, maybe. Suppose we asked him. We can go right in. Billy never likes his dog. See? Well, you ought to know. He's your friend. That's funny. Must have gone off somewhere and left all the lights burned. <gasps> hey, look. Uh-uh. I guess we're a little late. Somebody stuck a knife in Billy, too. And they did a better job this time. He's dead. But, but why did they kill why him? Why not? He served his purpose, and there was no use taking a chance on it. Huh? Hey, what did you find? A couple of bank drafts in his coat pocket. Signed by Evan Hammond. Well. But, but who's behind all this stuff? Blowing up airplanes, killing people? Now we've got two good possibilities on all its sides of the fence in this business of the Arab farm loan. Evan Hammond and a man named Gromitz. They both claim to know Manning's decision and their claims disagree. I got it. One of them is lying. The question is which one? What was Manning's decision? Well, I, I guess that's that's something we'll never know. Maybe not, Pagan. But we can pretend to know. Oh, oh, come in, Pagan. Boy, for a lousy hundred bucks, I sure had to do a lot of running around. And me... Sick men besides. Did you get that rumor started? Oh, sure. I'm an old hand at that racket. I planted it with the bellhops, taxi drivers, Arab guides. You know, the usual grapes went. Exactly what did you plan? Oh, I just what you told me to. That before he went to the airport, this Manning guy had mailed the report with uh, his decision about that Arab loan thing. Uh -huh. huh? And that the post office turned it over to you. And you're holding it unopened here in your room. <laughs> hey, are you... Of course not. I didn't think so, no, I didn't. Well, what do we do now? Nothing, we wait. You mean to see which one of those two guys tries to... Hey, hey, there, there's a third one. You forgot about the daughter of Abin Hamid's. Oh, no, I didn't. It's after midnight. I don't think anybody is going to come here well, at all. Well, it could be right. <laughs> Why I'm always getting myself mixed up with this messes anyhow. Pagan, I often wonder. Here I am, peacefully buying Persian rugs in Algiers, strictly legitimate, and what happens? So you nearly got blown up in an airplane. Oh, that was an accident. What I mean is, I run into you, and, and three hours later I get knifed in the back. That's friendship for you. <laughs> a friend wouldn't make a wounded man sit up all night. You don't have to. Go on down to your room. You get stabbed again? Hmm. That, that's the kind of dilemma I always get myself into when... Mr. Kemp, that for you. Huh? Smell it. She's here somewhere. Pagan, you oh, may... Gentlemen, don't move. Put up your hands, please. Uh, fire escape, huh? I was afraid you might be expecting someone by way of the door, Mr. Kendall. Hey, it's that groundwood's guy. That's right. Who did you expect? But that perfume, I thought... Oh, he, he wears it on his head. I know, I noticed it at dinner. This is the man who stabbed you, killed Beely, too, didn't you, Gromitz? 
certainly. After I had him tell your friend he worked for Robin Hamid, I wanted to make sure he wouldn't change the story. And I imagine the explosives were planted in the luggage you left aboard the plane. Of course. When Manning told me I was going to recommend the loan, I decided to eliminate him. It was really too easy. But, Mr. Kendall, what about those bank drafts and billies from Aben Hammond? Interest payments on mortgages, I suppose, right, Grammage? I really did not come here for a question and answer session, Mr. Kendall. I would like to have that report of Manning's. Oh. Now we're in for it. Mr. Kendall, if you knew he was that one, why did you let him come in here with a gun because and get the I wanted with him it? to admit a few things huh? in front of witnesses. Witnesses? That's right. Come on in, Aben Hammond. You will drop that gun, Mr. Grammage. I will drop nothing. Watch him! He's going to go out the window! Come on! Stop! Don't try to stop me, or I'll... Uh, uh, slip! Look! No! Oh. oh! Oh, Mr. Candle. He fell off the fire escape. He, he fell clear to the pavement. Yeah. Well, it won't bring Manning back. Up in Hammond. But at least there'll be enough evidence to ensure a passage of the Arab loan. May Allah be thanked. My people have a saying, Mr. Kendall, that he who steals the water from his neighbor's well will fall someday from a high place. Never have I seen the saying more amazingly fulfilled. It's a true saying. He who steals the water from his neighbor's well... That's exactly what's going on today all over the world, stealing water from a neighbor's well, trying to win at somebody else's expense. And the water's always lost, nobody gains. Why don't they dig their own wells? Our star for tonight, Mr. Joseph Cotton, will return in just a moment. And now, here's Bing Crosby with a word about vacations. Oh, Ken, when you mention vacations, it brings a tear to me eye and a lump in my throat. Poor Uncle Herbert. Well, what happened to your Uncle Herbert? Uncle Herbert loves to fish. So on his vacation, he hired himself off all alone to a secluded spot way back in the woods. Poor Uncle Herbert. He uh, forgot his fishing pole? He forgot his Chesterfield. Oh. So friends, take a tip from me. Whether you're packing to take off for the weekend or for that long-anticipated vacation, pack a couple of cartons of those milder Chesterfields. When you take off on a trip like that, you, you like to go where you want and do what you want. So take along the cigarette that gives you what you want, Chesterfield. Chesterfield gives you its famous ABCs. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. Plus, no unpleasant aftertaste. Yep, the country's first and only cigarette taste panel reported. Of all brands tested, only Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Vacation time, anytime. Take Chesterfield's with you. Now, here again is our star for tonight, Mr. Joseph Cotton. As Herbert Marshall would say, thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Lucille Meredith, Will Wright, Stan Waxman, Polly Bear, and Harry Bartell. Next week, a flying trip to Indonesia. And, of course, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan. So listen, won't you, when Herbert Marshall returns as the man called X. Good night. Joseph Cotton may currently be seen in the Hal Wallace production, Pekin Express. The Man Called X is the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio first, in recorded music first, in television. And by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The Man Called X is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear The Magnificent Montague with Monty Woolley, formerly heard on Friday, now brought to you as a Saturday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Next, join Roy Shield on NBC.